Hello, everyone, and let me go ahead and get set up here. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, there's a. That, this is awkward. That's Mr. Gas. I did not mean for everyone to see that. Let me get into our PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Here's your lesson on percent of change. Let's go ahead and just get right into it. How to find a percent of change. And uh, go into our first uh, part here. And uh, for these problems, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be figuring out how much something has changed um, by a percent. You know, how much something has either gone up, a percent of increase, or how much something has gone down if you're looking at it from a percent of decrease. And, um, you know, this is basically the same stuff. You know, we're dealing with proportions here, and uh, th that is not going to be anything new. How to solve proportions and how to set up proportions is really not anything new. We're, you know, we're just kind of tweaking it a little bit. Uh, the percent of change proportion looks like this, okay? And you want it set up like this. On this side of the, uh, on this side of the proportion, that's your percent side. So just like it's always been, you're going to put your percent here. So sometimes you'll have your percent, but for the most part, we're going to be looking for this. So this is always going to be N for the most part, N or X or whatever letter you want to put, or P if you want to think of it as just percent. But um, for the most part, you're going to be looking for the percent. The percent is going to be unknown. And this is the side you really have to concentrate on. Uh, this is the side where you're going to want to really think about how you're setting it up. And what we're going to do is whenever you set up a percent of change problem, you're going to set it up so that amount of change is in the numerator. So how much did it change? Okay, How much more money are you making? So if you made $8 in allowance last week and you made $10 this week, the amount of change is $2. $2. If uh, last year you were 58 inches tall and this year you are 61 inches tall, the amount of change is three inches. So you're putting how much something changed. And even if it goes down, you know, let's say your um, your grade went from, you got a you know 25 points on a quiz last week and this week you got 19. Uh, that's um, a change of six. And you don't need to write negative six, just it changed six. And then in the denominator, you're going to put um, the original amount. You know, how, how tall were you last year? How much money did you originally make? So it's it's always about the original amount. What did you start with? You know, it's it's kind of like before and after. Where were you before? Okay, we're not really concerned with after in terms of um, this number. So original amount. All right, so let's get into our first example here. So last year, the sixth grade had 250 students, and this year there are 145 students. Find the percent of change. So there's a couple things we need to be concerned about here is, um, you know, what is the amount of change and what was the original amount? So amount of change means how much did the population change? Last year, sixth grade had 250 students. This year, there are 145. So it went down, and that doesn't really matter. What matters is is how much it changed by. So you're going to figure out how much it changed by finding the difference of 250 and 145. So subtract those numbers, and you get 105. Okay? So that's not 105%. It's just 105. Okay? It's just a raw number. It's a raw figure. It's it's not the percent yet. We have to solve that proportion to figure out what the percent is going to be. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, original amount. The original amount is 250, right? Because that's where um, sixth grade was before. It was originally 250. Now it's 145. We want to look at where it was before. That's that's important because I think that's sometimes confusing for students to figure out what what was the original amount. Okay, always look at what it was before it changed. What was the number before it all, you know, went down to 145. Okay, so now I I've kind of gone through a few steps here, but uh, 250 times n is 250 n. 
100 times 105 is 10,500. And then you should all know by now how to solve these. You need to solve across multiplying and then dividing by the letter or the number that's next to the letter. So that's a 45% a or 42% decrease. And there you have it, 42% decrease. The, the percent of sixth graders is almost half of what it was last year. This isn't really true. I'm just, these were numbers I just made up off the top of my head. But that's what, it, and that's what we get. It's a 42% decrease. Okay, next example here. Okay, last year's concert was attended by 4,212 people. This year, there, were 14 there was a 14% increase in attendance. How many people attended the concert this year? Now, in this example, uh, we have the percent of increase. And we're, we're probably going to be looking for one of these numbers, one of these figures. So what do you think we're looking for here? Last year's concert was attended by 4,212 people. This year, there was a 14% increase. So what do you think? Um, 4,212 people, is that um, the, how much it changed? Or is that the original amount? Hmm. I think the original amount was 4,212. Yeah, there's nothing here that says how, how much it changed by. It, all you're given is a percent of change. Uh, there, there's nothing in this problem or in this example that tells you how much it changed by a number, just by a percent. And percents and numbers, you know, you can't really say that those are the same. Just because something changed 14% doesn't mean it went up 14. Uh, that would be true if it was out of 100, but this is not out of 100. This is in the thousands. So let's go ahead and put the 14% there because we have our percent and our original amount will go there. So our N or our X will be the amount of change. Okay, so it's always important to know what you're looking for. So I'm kind of going going through a few steps here, but 100 times n is 100n, 14 times 4,212 is 58,968. Divide by 100, and there you have it, 589.68. Now, since we're dealing with people, you're probably not going to want to put a decimal, so you might want to round it. You can round it to the nearest whole number, so 589.6, that rounds up to 590. So about, you could say, last year's concert was attended by 4,212 people. This year, there were about 590 more people at the concert. That's a 14% increase. It doesn't seem like 14%, but it's because it's out of a big number. 4,212 is big, you know, relatively speaking, and it went up almost 600. And that's how it goes. And then don't forget to add um, the number of people that it increased by to figure out this year's attendance. So I did 4,212 plus 590, and I got 4,802 people. There you go. So that's the attendance this year. It went up. It went up 590, okay? And make sure you add that on to 4,212. Hey, last example here. A shirt is on sale for $24, which was $6 less than it originally cost. What was the percent of decrease? Okay, so in this problem, we're looking for percent. So this is going to stay N, whatever letter you want to make it. But that's going to stay N. So the shirt was on sale for $24, which was $6 less than it originally cost. All right, so the amount of change. How much did it change? Now, in this one, you don't really have to do any subtraction. I mean, it's basically given to you. I'm giving you how much it changed. $6. I told you, literally, it was $6 less than it was original, what, than it was last year. However, um, the amount of change, or um, the original amount, I should say, the um, original amount is not necessarily given. It's given, but indirectly it's given. So the original amount was 30. So how did I get 30? Because I don't see 30 up here. I see 24. I see 6, but I don't see a 30. 
So what I did was I added $6 onto 24 because it says that was $6 less than it was originally. So originally it was 30, it was 30. The price right here, $24, that is not what it was originally. That's the sale price. That's what it is right now. That's what it is today at this very moment. We're looking for the original price, which is $6 more. So there are your numbers. So always be thinking about what kind of numbers you're dealing with. You know, is this is this a percent? Is it the original amount? Is the amount of change? Do I need to add or subtract? Always be thinking about what you have to do with those numbers. And six goes there, original amount goes there. Really, I mean, we did all the hard work already, which was making sure we knew what numbers we were dealing with. And the easy part, I think, for you guys, is just going to be solving them. So go ahead and solve this out on your own. See what you get. You know, pause the video and check your answer after you unpause it. You know, try to do these on your own. Don't just try to copy from what I'm doing. You know, try to you know do the math and, and figure out how to do it without too much assistance from me. Okay, so let's go over this here. Uh, when we solve this, we're going to cross multiply, cross products. They're called. 30 times n is 30n. 6 times 100 is pretty simple. That's 600. And you're going to divide both sides by 30. 600 divided by 30 is 20. So that's a 20% decrease. So the sale was 20% off, basically. That's what it was. So if you ever want to see if, you know, if the store is really giving you the discount you deserve, you can always put these numbers in and make sure they gave you the right kind of discount. You should always be skeptical of, of sales sometimes because uh, you're not always saving what they say you are. Sometimes stores don't give you as much off as, that, as, as much as they claim. So that does it, everybody. I am done here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and continue uh, drawing funny things on Mr. Gaston, and you guys can work on your flip notes and your exercise. So everyone have a good night and see you tomorrow.